Um, so for this uh, CNC milling uh, tutorial for you guys, I've, I've set up uh, the, this file where <clears throat> um, it, it, it has this, it, you can read it from left to right, right? And on the left hand side, it has this uh, single element, not, not even an element, a form, which is like overly simplified, simplified version of, you know, one one type of the element that we that we used, uh, which is you know okay to to give a very basic overview of how to set up the file for CNC milling. But of course, if if it works for this model, you know that your setup, then it will work for something that is more complex. In most cases, in other cases it might not. But uh, I'll I'll kind of make sure to you know, highlight the cases where CNC milling is going to be very problematic. So first of all, I am not sure if all of you are familiar with uh, CNC milling. So I'll just quickly CNC milling uh, would uh, whatever. I'll just explain what CNC milling is. It's basically um, with, with 3D printing, you have what's called additive manufacturing, right? Additive from the word add. So you keep adding layers of plastic uh, or not necessarily plastic, but of material on top of each other and thus you 3D print, right? With CNC milling, it's a re retractive, retractive manufacturing? Re retract. yeah, I think it's, I think, hmm? Subtractive. subtractive, yeah. It's subtractive manufacturing, goddamn. Um, and it's uh, kind of the opposite of uh, 3D printing, right? So you're removing material. And I think I've, yeah, we can look at this one, for instance, you know, CNC milling wood. So you have a, a drill bit. Well, it's not, a, it's not necessarily a drill bit, it's a CNC bit, uh, which removes uh, material. And it's, it does that also kind of in layers, not, not really in layers, but let's say kind of in layers, right? So, so you're, you're carving out your form. And for instance, this machine right here, it's uh, three, I, I believe it's a three axis CNC mill machine. So it works exactly in the same way as a 3D printer, right? It, it can move to the left, to the right, and up and down. So X, Y, Z, meaning three axes. There are also much cooler CNC machines, which are five or seven axis one, uh, ones. So if I search for seven axis CNC machining, this is much cooler. Um, let me just find, yeah, for instance, this helmet. Sure, why not? So seven axis machining looks like this, where the robot can the build plate and the robot can move separately from each, each other. And in, in, gen, in total, you have seven axes of movement. So you, uh, the, the drill uh, can fit into we, re, at we, very, very weird corners, right? Like, like that. And thus you can mill out the whole helmet. And well, helmet is weird to mill out, but uh, for um, airplane or, or even car engines, it's a saver, right? So that's uh, seven axis milling. All we have in the school, like the, the, the best, not the best, but the most flexibility uh, which we have in the school is five axis 3D milling machine, uh, which is, uh, sorry, five axis CNC milling machine, which is located in the IKDC building but it has a pretty small um, volume that it can mill. And also, um, I, I, I think you need to pay for every, for every hour that is spent with that machine or something like that. So, so you pay for it. In the architecture department, we have a three axis CNC mill, which is pretty damn large. And you can fit a pretty big thing in it, right? And you can mill out I think it's around two meters long. So you can mill out something that is, you know, one meter, 90 centimeters in, in, in length and around 80 or 90 centimeters in width. And 
I, I, I don't know how tall. Um, which would take a long time, but doesn't matter because it's free to use. Uh, so so that, that's why, I guess, why I'm giving you this tutorial. Right now, due to the coronavirus, the, uh, the school is, uh, has closed the wood workshop, so we can't use the CNC machines now. But in the future, like the, this tutorial is for the future for you guys. So enough of that. Um, this form right here that we have will require us to carve out, uh, carve it out from two directions, right? you kind of carve, carve it out from uh, the top, you know, so you remove all of the material from the top and carve it out, and then you flip it over and you carve out the bottom, right? So, so you, you remove the material from the bottom too, and what you're left with is this, uh, this form right here. So I've broken it down for you in steps here to just explain uh, how, how the process goes. So first of all, um, <clears throat> this part right here uh, is just kind of placed in, in a bigger box. And this box, uh, like the bounding box, let's say this thing right here is just a solid piece of wood or solid piece of uh, styrofoam, doesn't matter. Right? It's just a solid piece. And then uh, the first thing that, uh, that is done is this form right here. Let me just align it a little bit better. This form right here, um, on, only the top part of this form is CNC milled, right? So, so this kind of form is prepared. And, and th this is basically the same thing, right? If I were to hide these guys, and I'll talk about those guys in a bit, it's just a single poly surface. Uh, so this whole thing is a single poly surface, and only the top of the element is being milled out, right? So think of it, you know, this whole thing is made out of wood, right? And then you, uh, then I do the same thing for the bottom, right? So I create a se se separate model for the bottom part, right? bottom part here so it has a separate model and it's basically the, the the way it's going to work is you have a piece of wood right you have a piece of wood right and you give it this this file here right and it carves out you know from this big piece of wood it carves out this guy here, right? So, so you end up with this form. And then what you do is you stop the CNC machine, you take the form and you rotate it in, in the world, like physically, you, you, you rotate the form, it's out of saving weight. <laughs> God damn it. Worst timing. Okay, so you ro rotate the form 180 degrees, right? So now your form here is in the bottom and you mill out on this surface, you mill out this form, right? So you use a separate file for it. And this is what's called a two-part CNC milling, right? Two-sided CNC milling. You physically rotate the, 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 you know, the, the piece of wood and you carve out the bottom part of it. Um, then there is one problem. You know, you carve out from the top, you carve out from the bottom, and the problem that, that you have is that it's not, you know, it's still going to be stuck. Your, your form is still going to be stuck in, in, in this bigger wood piece, wood block. So then what you do is you add to, to, to your CNC milling files, you add these kind of, a, I don't know how to call them, like through holes, like holes that go through right? These guys. And since you're going to be flipping them, uh, flipping it over, these through holes don't need to go all the way through the model. They just need to reach the half part because you carve out, well, this is already with, you know, these guys carved out. So you carve out until half, then you flip it over and you carve out with this ones until half again. And what you're left with 
<clears throat> by the end of the whole CNC milling process is this top part and this bottom part. So this is after the CNC milling has taken place. You're left with this kind of a form, right? Then you take a saw, <laughs> you put it in, the, in, in, in one of these holes and just cut, 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 and you're left with something like this, uh, which comes out you know, for, from, from the CNC model. And of course, you can make it much, much nicer. For instance, I would probably choose to have um, the, these holes rather than them being located in the center here. I would have them located on the corners here for sure. Right, uh, so every corner gets a hole rather than ev every center point gets a hole. Um, I would be doing that for sure, but um, for, for this example, I think this is good enough, right? So you're left with this and then you just take a saw again and kind of, you know, cut, cut away these, these shit pieces here, unnecessary pieces. I think those are called holders, if I remember correctly. So you cut away the holders, and uh, you sand it down and you have your piece, right? That's as, as easy as, as it gets, right? So this is the theory uh, of, of, of CNC milling. And now to put it in practice, here, um, one, two, three, four, four from the left, you have model for CNC milling top part and model for CNC milling bottom part, right? So these two guys are uh, the, 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 the models that you would import into Fusion 360. So without further ado, I will open up Fusion 360, which is super nice that it's free for, for students for the education use. I will open up Fusion 360. As it's opening up, I will export these two models. Well, actually, I'll be just showing the tutorial with one of them because it's, come on, it's going to be absolutely the same for the other model. Uh, as, as, like the setup is going to be absolutely the same. Um, so I'll just be showing you with that, let's say the top part with, with this model here. I'll select it and I'll type in export, enter. And here I'll just name it CNC top. And the file type that we use is called STEP, step format. So for 3D printing, we always use STL. And STL is basically the most bare bone mesh format. STP is the most bare bone, most simplistic uh, poly surface or, or NURPS surface uh, model extension, right? So it doesn't carry over materials. It doesn't carry over any additional information. It just carries over the, 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 the form, the geometric information. So CNC top, STEP format. I'll hit save it will ask me for STEP schema. Uh, this is for my, uh, like I, I always choose automotive design. Don't ask me why, I just, I think I Googled it out and for like three years ago and <laughs> I'm just using it and it works, so it's fine. And uh, everything else here is, is whatever, right? I, I, I won't be messing around with, with these settings. I'll, I'll keep them as defaults. I'll just hit okay. File successfully saved, super. Then I can go jump into Fusion. And here in the top uh, left corner, I have file uh, menu. Top left corner file, I'll click on it. I'll choose open. And here, okay, so Fusion 360 is like a, it tries to be a cloud-based thing and you know everything is connected to the cloud and so on. No, we don't care about that. We have saved it into our desktop. So I'll be clicking the button which says open from my computer. 
So click that, open from my computer, find cnc top dot stp, hit open, and it's going to open open up for you. Okay, so question to the group: uh, How many of you have opened the file and it's rotated ninety degrees? Like uh, so, so it's vertical on your on your screens. Or is it fine for everyone? It's fine. Uh, I don't have Fusion, so <laughs> okay. I, uh, I can't open it. Nice. <laughs> OK. OK, so if it's fine, uh, then, then it's good. Um, I, I'm following you, but I'm not doing anything. I have Fusion, but I'm not doing anything since the, oh, I know the, it will the, be uploaded on YouTube, I guess. <laughs> Oh, that's that's very good to 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 hear. Uh, really helps my self esteem that it's just me who's doing that, uh, doing this tutorial. Nice. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. What I I think I heard Emil who who said that uh, it opens up five fine for him. So so there's a little bit of silver lining here. Anyway, um, this this. Uh, this file here sometimes opens up vertical. And if it does, then you need to go to, and I'm, I'm not sure if it's a version thing or what, uh, but if it opens up vertical, then you click on your name on the right hand side, you click on preferences. Hello, preferences, there we go. And where it says default modeling orientation, you choose that Z is up. Because if Y is up, then it's going to kind of import, you know, at a weird angle, not a weird angle, but it's going to be import old school way and we're all about the new school. So uh, Z is up in our case. Okay, uh, so we have this file. A short talk about Fusion 360. Basically the same thing, uh, Fusion 360 is the same thing as Rhino, only it's much better at filleting stuff. And also Fusion 360 remembers every single step that you make during the design process so you can uh, jump back. Um, so it's parametric in its essence. So you can jump back a few steps, change the offset radius, and it's going to update every you know, modeling step that you've made for, for the file throughout. Which means that you in Fusion 360 you need to be even more controlled how you model things than you are in Rhino. Uh, it has a few um, modeling, not types, but the ways you work with Fusion 360 are located here on the left hand side where it says design. So if I click on it, uh, this tab will expand and here you have design, render, animation, simulation, and manufacture and drawing, but whatever. Uh, so design-wise, um, you can extrude, you know, road, like anything that you can do in uh, Rhino, you can, almost anything, you can do in uh, Fusion 360. It's pretty strong uh, when it comes down to uh, product design and, and so on. Render-wise, I'm not sure why you would use Fusion 360 to render, but I guess you can. Animation, uh, you can do um, assembly, disassembly animations of, of like more technical forms, uh, which is quite useful, but I prefer to use 3ds Max for that just simply because I'm used to it. Simulation, where you can simulate the, um, uh, the, the, the yielding, the bending of the part and you know how much stress it can take. And also um, with simulation, you can also do, remember the topological optimization of the parts that we've done? where we got those kind of blobby shapes. Uh, you can do the same thing in Fusion 360 through simulation tab. And then we have manufacture, which is what we are going to be using for uh, this tutorial. So I will choose, instead of design, I will choose manufacture. I'll click it. And you can see my menu changes, right? So now my whole menu in the top is all about manufacturing. Um, oh, by the way, um, how to rotate and, and, and kind of work with the view. Scroll, scroll wheel, scroll wheel, zoom in, zoom out. If you just try to right click, you, you know, th this will happen. You'll be able to draw stuff. 
uh, this is like a shortcut menu, right? So, so you can assign different um, movements when you right click to, to get different shortcuts uh, to, to, wor to work. Or if you just right click, it will kind of remember the last um, tools that you've used and you'll be able to choose from them. So, which means right clicking is not rotating. Rotating is holding down the shift key and uh, clicking the and dragging the scroll wheel. That's rotation. Holding down the control key and clicking and dragging the scroll wheel is pan. And that's it, right? Zoom in, zoom out, pan, rotate. Yeah, that, that's it. Also, you can use that box here on the right-hand side corner. Um, that's, that's like for me, it's quite useful if I need to check the right view or you know, the front view or the top view. And then I just click on the corner of the box and it's messing up. That's nice. So then I just kind of wiggle it until it gives me the, <laughs> the nice angle. Uh, so we're back. Okay, so the way we set, set it up for Fusion 360, the way we set up the CNC mill file is if we go to, the, the, the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up uh, our stock. And stock is, uh, so what's, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, stock is the material from which, a material block from which you're going to carve out this shape. Right. So let's say a block of wood would be called considered a stock, or block of styrofoam would be considered a stock. So the first thing that you always do is you choose setup, right? So where, where you have milling, you click on setup, like that. And this menu will pop up where you can choose the machine, and unfortunately we do not have a machine uh, here, right? Um, like it, it only has like 3D printers and then crap like that. Um, but we, we do not have the machine that is uh, the one in the school. So we'll just leave it as, as default, we, we don't care. Um, but here where it says operation type milling, that's, that's perfect. That's, that's what we want. Operation type is going to be CNC milling. Uh, world coordinate system, we don't care. Uh, model, um, if you don't select a model uh, by, by choosing body, it's just going to consider that, yeah, you want to mill out the whole thing. And we do want to mill out the whole thing. So I will not be doing anything with the model part. Here we have fixture. If I select the fixture, then you can have these kind of clamps modeled out. And you can see that, uh, yo, the, the, the CNC mill should try and evade the clamps. But in this case, we don't have a fixture, so we don't care. Usually use, if you're milling out styrofoam, you just use double-sided sticky tape and it's good enough for a fixture. Okay, so that's that. Uh, basically nothing to change on this part, uh, just make sure that it says milling here. Oh, by the way, if you hover your mouse over any input, it's going to give you a nice graphic, you know, a nice explanation of what, uh, what it does. Then we have stock. So stock is again, the material from which you're going to be carving out. And uh, it has different ways of how you can set up the size of that block of wood or block of styrofoam. Um, the different modes, right? So here it's relative size box. If it's said to be relative size box, it's going to measure the bounding box of your shape and it's just going to add one millimeter um, to, to, to each side. And I think that's fine, um, you know, at, at do, doing it like that. Or, but, but, but then you need to kind of cut the stock to, to be really correct in size. Or if you already have pre-cut the stock, then you would just choose fixed size box and kind of, you know, type in what, what, what's the size of, 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 of the raw material that you have, you know, this kind of block of wood or styrofoam that you have. In this case, I'll say that, yeah, my, my, Wood block is going to be 300 by 300, uh, 302 by 302 by 101 millimeters. 
that's because of these offsets here. If these offsets were 0, 0, then it would be 300, 300, and 100. So I'm going to just say that. Uh, yeah, sure, that's what's going on. Um, and other than this, post-process, we don't care. Uh, for now, uh, we won't be using post-process. That's fine. Uh, so stock-wise, we're all set up. I'll just hit OK. And we have our setup. So here on the left-hand side, you can see like this setup one was created and I can actually um, rename it somehow. Am I blind? Hello, rename? Oh, I just click on, on the name of it and then I can rename it. So I'll just say uh, my first setup or what, whatever, my first setup. Okay. So notice how this model has now a yellow box, like yellow transparent box around it. If I, if I click on my first setup, the model becomes yellow. If I click somewhere else, the model becomes you know, regular. So it, it, this my first setup shows me the size of the stock that is going to be used to carve out the model. So now I have the block of material and now I need to generate toolpath. You know how the drill, it's, it's not a drill, it's a CNC bit. There's a difference. Uh, CNC bit versus drill. Or sorry, uh, rou router bit versus drill bit. Images. Uh, or is it better to just drill slack the power and speed for affecting effective and safe routing, right? Um, it's basically if you're going to, if you are planning to do to make a your own CNC machine and you're going to say, oh, I'm just going to use a drill for that, the drill is going to break. <laughs> you yeah. uh, so. Be mindful that a router bit and a drill bit, even though they look quite similar, uh, they are rather uh, different in their in their strength. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. So so now we're going to produce uh, the the path on how the material is going to be removed, and I'm going to do that in two passes. The first pass is going to be us removing as much material as possible uh, and as fast as possible. And the second pass is going to be what's called the beauty pass, us removing uh, you know, the, the, the material in a very precise manner. So let's first off remove all of the unnecessary meat, you know, the, the, the bulk of material from this. To do that, here you can see 2D. So 2D is just, you know, working with the drill, uh, with the routing bit in two dimensions. And here we have 3D. If I expand this table, I can, I can see different ways of how this kind of pathing can be achieved. And first two are for roughing passes. Uh, we have 10 minutes left. That's fine. If we need to, we'll, we'll, um, continue recording this. Um, so we have two passes. Uh, one is uh, two, ref, uh, two roughing passes to choose from. One is called adaptive clearing, while the other one is called pocket clearing. Uh, the difference between them is that adaptive clearing changes the layer height according to uh, how much resolution it needs, while pocket clearing doesn't care, it just uses the same layer height and keeps you know, pushing the drill bit down by the same step. Uh, I prefer using pocket clearings just simply because it calculates faster, <laughs> uh, but I guess adaptive clearing would be smarter to use. Doesn't matter, I'll use pocket clearing again. So I'll just click on that and you can see uh, this menu pop up where we can change a lot of different things about how that path is generated. Hopefully we can do that in eight minutes. Um, so first of all, it asks us for what kind of tool are you going to use? 
Okay. So I'll choose to select the tool. And here we, we, we see that, you know, I, I don't know, maybe you see something like this, maybe something else, doesn't matter. All of the tools that the school has are located in the tools file that I've sent to you guys. And the way you can import the tools file is if you go to, on the left hand side, if you select local, right click on it, and choose to import tool library. Then you can navigate to the ethna-cnc-tools.tools file and hit open. And once you do that, you should be able to see, um, you know, all, all, all of these tools imported. So these are all different drill bits that the school uh, school's wood workshop has. And they already come with uh, the surface speed implemented and so on. So we won't need to change a lot of settings. Said that, of course, the surface speed and cutting rate and all of those things changes according to what kind of material you're cutting. But since neither me nor you guys are CNC operators, we have no idea, you know, so it's, it's better to leave it for the CNC operators to decide. Uh, and I'll talk about that uh, more in a bit. But for now, my model is 30 by 30 centimeters. Uh, it's, it's 30 by 30 centimeters. And, and I think it's like 10 centimeters high. Uh, so I think if I use a one set centimeter uh, ball and mill, ball and um, uh, bit, it should um, should be quite you know, good for, for the size of, of, of the model. So it's like one centimeter in diameter. Uh, and you can see here, there's a flat end mill, which is, you know, has the flat end and there's the ball end mill. The difference between these is that um, this guy, the ball end mill, can go much faster. I think. Wait, or is it the other way? No, uh, where you have the flat end mill, there's, due to this sharp corner, it bends more. So yes, the ball end mill can go faster. Right. So I'll just choose this one, ball end mill, uh, 10 millimeters, hit okay, like that. And you can kind of see it appear on my screen here. So this is the relative size of it. Again, this is to remove as much material as fast as possible. So this is fine. Um, and since I selected it, you know, and applied it, um, it, it kind of gives me all of these settings by default, which is, kind of nice. I know that these settings are, are complete garbage, but again, this is something that your CNC operator should calibrate and should, you know, tell you what kind of settings for that particular type of material you should use. Um, so, so it's, I don't think it's wise to, to, to mess around with these settings if you don't know what's going on. Coolant, um, in this case, you know, flood, mist, through tool, air, and so on, we, that doesn't matter. Uh, if you're not milling out the freaking uh, aluminum or any other metal, uh, the coolant doesn't matter. Uh, so we'll just leave it as it is. Then you have shaft and holder here. Uh, I always put a tick mark there because here I can change uh, how will it treat uh, how, what will it do if it uh, knows that it's going to hit the model? Should it uh, just cram into the model? So this would be the, I'm showing with my finger on the screen, <laughs> this would be the disabled um, shaft and holder uh, mode. Um, should it kind of evade it by, by trimming the path? That would be the trimmed mode or should it pull away? I always use pull away. I think it's, it's uh, I don't know, 
um, I guess it's up to you to decide which, which one you prefer, but pull away, I think, is the safest one. And clearances of one millimeter and five millimeters, I think, are fine. Uh, so I'll, I'll keep them as they are. <clears throat> Next up, we have, uh, so, so this is, we're done with this tab. If I turn on the next tab, we have geometry. And uh, in this case, we don't care uh, because this is the first uh, path that we're doing. We don't really care about uh, rest machining or model. So, so uh, we, we just leave it as it is. That's fine. Heights, uh, this is, you know, how much is it going to pull up? Uh, what does it consider to be the top? Was it, what does it consider to be the bottom of, 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 of the box and so on? So it's always a good idea to kind of go through this and check out whether or not it's you know, making a mistake, but usually by default, it generates a pretty good clearance, like uh, not just clearance heights, but different heights are generated automatically pretty well. So I won't be messing around with these. Then we have the most important part, which is passes. And passes are, uh, through these, you kind of control the quality um, and the step size and so on of, of the drill bit. So keep thinking about it as if this is a negative 3D printing, right? So it's removing material layer after layer, right? So you can describe the tolerance for it. You can describe the... <coughs> minimum diameter. And here you can des describe the step over. So what step over is, um, in Photoshop, let me draw it out real quick in, 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 in Photoshop. So I'm, I'm going to be drawing this in section. Yeah, this is uh, very, very small. Okay, so the eh, Jesus Christ, the drill bit is 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 around it, you know, bull, bull nose drill bit, or not bull nose, just a rounded drill bit, meaning it has a Jesus. <laughs> Let me try again. There we go. Uh, it has a radius, right? And as it's carving into the material, right? Um, it, it's in the top view. So this is the side view, right, of, 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 of the drill bit. As it's carving uh, in, into the material in the top view, it's going to do some sort of a path, right? As, as it's go, go, going deeper and deeper in. Oh, wait, let, let me call you again and uh, we will continue. Just a second, our, our time is up, with the, the free time is up, just a second. Um, it's, it's a nasty thing about Zoom that they have the, like for the free uh, accounts, they have 40 minutes uh, limit. And the problem is that uh, getting a paid account right now is pretty rough because everything is, you know, um, the, the, the system doesn't work properly. So I can't get my payment approved. Uh, anyway, uh, we have the drill bit here. Right, so it's carving into the material in the top view. It's doing some sort of uh, something like this, or maybe it's doing a path like, like so. Doesn't matter, but it's taking some sort of a path, and there's always going to be uh, that kind of a gap, right, between you know the the the, the path lines. So that gap here. You know, as, as, as if we're looking at it from the side view, uh, that gap here is what's called a step over, right? And basically, if, if our drill bit is uh, 10 millimeters wide, right? And the step over is also uh, 10 millimeters, that means that, you know, on, on as it's going to go through the whole material, it's going to leave these kind of ridges here, right? So, so the material from the side will, uh, once it's carved out, will look like this, right? If uh, the step over size is 
five millimeters, you know, if, 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 if this gap is only five millimeters and our drill bit is, you know, is, is, is 10 millimeters, that means that uh, we will have something more like uh, something more like so that's 10 and then the next one is going to be between here and here that's also 10, but the step over between these two is five, right? So if it's five millimeters, then we will have something. Oh, Jesus Christ. There we go. Barely figured out how to, how to draw it. <laughs> we will have much, much lower ridges, right? So the smaller the step over, the better the quality is what I'm trying to say. In this case, we don't really care about the quality because we're, where am I? Here. Uh, because we're removing, uh, we're, this is a rough pass, right? We're just removing as much material as possible. So maximum step over, uh, since we're using a 10 millimeter drill bit, I'm going to say half of that, so five millimeters. And minimum step over, I'll also say five millimeters. I wonder if it's going to complain. We will see. If it's complaining, I will make minimum step over uh, into two millimeters or something like that. But basically here, I, I don't need it to be pretty, so I'm just using five millimeters. Then moving on, <clears throat> um, there's a bunch of settings here that we don't really, you know, as beginners, we don't really care about. Um, except maximum roughing step down. So there's one step over that is in the plan, you know, the gap between the path and the plan. And step down is basically the layer size, the negative layer size. So it's removing material from one layer and how, by how much will it go down for the next layer. So in this case, it's said to be one millimeter. And yeah, we can, uh, we can mess around with this one for sure. Um, one millimeter is, I mean, it's neither okay nor, nor bad. It's, it's, it's not a lot for sure. And how much, you know, how, how deep you can go with each layer depends on what kind of material you're milling out. If you're milling out titanium, maybe it's not a good idea to go, you know, to remove like 10, 10 centimeters of titanium in one layer you know, in, in one pass. Maybe it's a better idea to remove like half a millimeter of titanium with every layer. But if you're removing, if you're working with styrofoam, which is very, you know, a very soft material, then going even as deep as like, I don't know, um, two centimeters is, is fine. Uh, so in this case, for maximum roughing step down, I will say, um, let's go for one centimeter. So I'll, I'll, I'll just say 10 millimeters. Doesn't matter. Um, so 10, 10 millimeters. Okay. Uh, so then stock to leave. So this is basically, um, since this is a roughing step down and there's going to be a tolerance issue, uh, it's going to leave a little bit of, 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 of material behind. Um, so it's going to take the model and kind of offset it and make it a little bit thicker than it should be. And it's half a millimeter. This is absolutely fine. Oh, by the way, again, if you hover over your, uh, your mouse over the different settings, it's going to kind of really explain it in depth for you, which is really nice. Then we have fillet smoothing feed optimization. Well, you can use feed optimization um, for, 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 reduction in, in, in um, milling time, but um, since I don't know, why can't I make this smaller? <laughs> God damn it. Since I don't know uh, what kind of uh, settings to use here, I will not be giving a tutorial about that. But feed optimization basically just, um, it reduces um, 
flaking uh, of the material and it also reduces the, 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 uh, the cut times as well, but just slightly. Uh, linking, the last tab here, uh, the only thing that I change about linking is full, instead of full retraction, I use minimum retraction. If I hover my mouse over this, it's gonna be easier to explain. So this is like uh, full retraction is basically Z-hop, right? Uh, Z-hop completely enabled, uh, let me minimize that. Z-hop completely enabled. Uh, minimum retraction is kind of Z-hop really um, where, where it needs to be. And shortest path is no Z-hop. So I hate shortest path because it kind of tends to destroy my, my models. Uh, I always use minimum retraction and it seems to work just fine. Other than that, I don't mess with anything else here. So everything else here is fine. I'll just hit okay. And now it's going to calculate the pocket clearing path. So you can see the blue holes uh, blue holes, the blue lines, green lines, red lines, and yellow lines. Blue lines are where it's cutting. Red lines is where it's going, um, kind of drilling into the material, going deeper into the material. And yellow lines is where it's just making movement without cutting. Um, so I can kind of see, you know, since we don't have a lot of yellow lines, this is kind of well optimized. But uh, what's much easier for me to see is if I click outside of, of, of my model, I, I will hide it. And I can hide my model by going here on the left-hand side and clicking on this uh, eye icon here. It's just going to be hidden, but that's fine because we will not be looking into the model during the preview of how it's going to be CNC milling. Rather, we are going to be looking into the stock and how it's getting carved out, right? So now, when I have my model hidden, I'm going to go to the top uh, menu here and I'll choose simulate. So I'll get this icon here. I'll click simulate. And here I have a bunch of, uh, not a bunch of settings, but a few settings. So this is, what do you want to see, right? Do you want to see the tool or not? I do want to see the tool. Sure. Would you like the tool to be transparent? Yes, I would. Would you like to, I, I don't know what this is. Doesn't matter. I won't explain it since I don't know what this does. Then would you like to see the tool path? Well, Yes, but maybe just uh, not the whole toolpath because it's gonna get in the way. Maybe just give me the tail of the toolpath. You know, the last uh, five or what, what not um, steps that it made. So just the tail. And would you like to see the stock? You know, what it's actually milling out? Yes, of course I would, right? If I tick mark the stock, it shows me, you know, just the, the block of material. And then I can choose what kind of material I want it to be, uh, how I want it to be displayed. And usually I either use plastic vinyl or metallic paint, which is, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Or ceramic, ceramic is fine as well. Um, let me jump back to plastic vinyl. Colorization, I will choose right, for now, I'll choose material, but later I will, um, I will change it to be by operation. But for now, material, mode, standard, transparent. Uh, no, not transparent. Stop on collision, yes. Always stop on collision. If it, if it finds a place where it's colliding, it will stop the simulation and say, yo, I'm going to hit um, the, 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 the model here. Where, where I shouldn't. So stop on collision on. And then all I need to do is just press the start, the simulation button, and it's going to show me how it's going to be, you know, kind of cutting into it. Um, to make it faster, here in the bottom, you can see speed. 
right? Uh, the, the slider, which is speed. So I can increase the speed to just see it better, you know, what it does. I'll just quickly, you know, and you can see how it goes in, in layers, right? In, in negative layers. So it's, it's carving out the shape. And by the end of it all, it, this is how it's going to look like. Right? So this is the rough pass where we remove as much material as we possibly can. When I see that this is all good, I will just close the, uh, the, the, the simulation. So this simulate window here, I will close it and it will end the simulation. And I will just enable my model preview again and continue working with it. So now we have removed a bunch of material from it. And now we need to make another um, beauty pass. Uh, so, so we need to make it nice. Um, first of all, warnings. Let me check the warning. Enable feature flags. Lifting retract plane to save plane. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that, that, that part is fine. If, if it says something about lifting the retract plane, that's OK. Don't, don't worry about that part. OK. Uh, so. I need to create a new, a second pass, a nicer, you know, higher quality pass. So to do that, I will right click on my existing pass, which is T1 pocket one, or I will rename it to rough pass in brackets pocket. Okay, rough pass. Uh, I will right click on it and choose uh, create a derived operation. If I don't do that, if I just simply click on um, one of these again, it's going to ignore what has been done with the stock up until now, right? And it's just going to kind of not know that the stock has already been milled with this refing pass. So I need to right click on the refing pass and choose create a derived operation. 3D milling and choose one of these passes from here. Uh, so parallel, contour, ramp, horizontal, and so on. Um, in this case, like for, for this model, I would use either parallel pass or I would use scallop pass. Um, honestly, I think, hmm. Yeah, let's try using uh, parallel, parallel pass. Both of these are kind of work in a similar fashion. They just go along the surface rather than stepping down. Um, but parallel is much more easier to explain. So I'll just choose parallel. The more you work with CNC milling, the more you will kind of know what kind of path to, to take, right, uh, for, for a certain geometry. In this case, parallel pass is fine. So I'll just choose that. Again, it asks me to choose a tool, but it's already set to be that 10 millimeter ball end mill. And let's say the CNC operator is uh, tired and he doesn't want to change the tool. So that's fine. We'll keep using the uh, 10 millimeter ball end mill for, for this pass as well. Shaft and holder trimmed. Uh, I will choose to pull away instead of it being trimmed. Um, so, so that's also an important thing to change. Then we have a geometry uh, tab where, you know, we didn't change anything uh, before, but now I will indeed change one thing and it's rest machining. So I'll tick mark that rest machining. I'll choose uh, the source. I'll make sure that the source is chosen to be from previous operations, right? So it's not uh, carving something that was already there. Uh, sorry, it's not carving out uh, the, the, the original stock, but rather carving out already carved out stock by the previous um, operation. Everything else is whatever. Heights, whatever, passes. Okay, so passes wise, in this case, uh, I really need to 
work with the step over step over size right um, for for my previous uh, milling operation I used five millimeters but in this case I want it to be a much nicer to have much nicer surface quality so for step over I will choose let's say one millimeter uh, probably yeah it's it's probably a little bit overkill but one millimeter should be fine so it's going to like once it does the zigzag and it's going to do a zigzag like that in in the plan view the gap between these lines is going to be one millimeter right back here step over one millimeter direction both ways that's fine uh la, 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 la. linking minimum retraction so nothing else to change here everything else is fine i'll hit okay and now it calculates the parallel pass calculates the parallel pass hello there we go no still calculating there there we go hmm for some reason ignores this part uh, we'll see maybe it's not that bad okay so we have now roughing pass and parallel pass right we have two of them uh, to simulate both of them at the same time you know roughing pass ends and parallel pass begins I can't just select parallel pass and choose simulate I need to select the setup here well first of all I need to hide the model then I need to choose the setup here my first setup and then click simulate then it's going to first simulate the roughing pass and then the parallel pass so let me hit simulate mm -hmm. press play it's gonna do its magic with the gray one not gray one sorry with the roughing pass mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bam. Okay. So, so it it it, it began doing the parallel uh, cutting, parallel pass, and here you can see. Oh, and it's going to be much more. It for some reason, and I don't know why this uh, constantly happens. For some reason here it says, "Oh, I'm colliding." Well, are you though? Are you really? doesn't seem like it so i'll just let it run again and now it says no no I'm, I'm really colliding but and i don't know how to how to fix it if you know let me know <laughs> but i i don't know how to how to fix this this part here you know that it constantly registers collisions even though it's not colliding at all um anyway i'll i'll, I'll leave it con uh, i'll, I'll have it continue and I'll actually I'll untick stop on collision for now <clears throat> and just let it run and you can see this you know how much better like higher quality uh, we get from it for some reason it completely ignored the the horizontal parts which I don't like why the hell did it ignore the horizontal parts hmm okay let me close it and kind of investigate it a little bit parallel so to edit it uh, to edit already existing pass you can right click on it and choose edit and then you're back here and is it is it the tolerance no it's not the tolerance it's not the step over pass direction that's fine direction both ways up down milling don't care mm -hmm, that's fine
additional offset, adjustment offset. This parameter specifies the amount of stock to be ignored or additionally removed, depending on the rest material adjustment setting. The parameter is primarily used to avoid my machine. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So remember where we had the ref pass and it uh, it has the it had the 0 0.5 millimeter um, additional thickness added so that when you were removing it in a brute force way, it doesn't destroy the model. Um, here, where it says adjustment offset, I believe this one needs to be zero so that now we are actually cutting into the model. Like not into the model, but right along the model. We're, we're not offsetting away from it. Other than that, tolerance 0 0.01, that's fine. Smoothing and whatever. Uh-huh, that's good, good, good. Maximum stay down distance, 50 millimeters. Preserve minimum. Okay, I'll, I'll choose full retraction for this one. Maybe that's going to help. Heights, geometry, tool, pull away, shaft clearance, one millimeter. Yeah, okay, uh, everything else seems to be okay. So I'm, I'm just waiting for, for it to calculate the new parallel pass. There we go, this is, ooh, this is so much nicer. Okay, 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 okay. So now let's see how it's uh, going to simulate. <clears throat> Turn off the model, press play. Run it as fast as possible. Oh, and actually for, for this simulation, let me uh, stop. Uh, let me change uh, the colorization. So right now the colorization was by material, right? So everything is colorized in the same way. But I can choose to have uh, colorization according to operation because we have two operations now. The roughing pass and the beauty pass, right? <clears throat> so I can choose operation and press play again. And now the, the rough pass is going to be red, like so. Uh, let me make it a bit faster. So the roughing pass is red, and then the beauty pass is uh, colored in blue, right? So you can see, uh, then you can see, you know, what 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 kind of material is left over from the um, what kind of material is left over from 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 the roughing pass. And now I think I've answered my question because there doesn't seem to be, let me enable stop on collision, but there doesn't seem to be any collisions. Oh, this is so much nicer. See, I've, I've learned some things as well. There we go. So this whole thing is simulated now. And you can see what kind of uh, output you will you will get from the CNC machine with a really really big drill bit. By the way, the whole machining time is one hour and fifty five minutes for this part. And then to to kind of finish up the tutorial, then you would do exactly the same process for the bottom side, you know, for the second model, which is the bottom side, this guy here, you would be doing the exactly same process in Fusion 360, and you would be exporting two G codes, one for the top side and one for the bottom side. And once the top side has been milled out, you kind of flip it over and then run the the bottom side G code and it carves out the bottom side. I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense? Uh, right, right in, in, in chat or, or tell me. You know, because you, you carve out the top side, you carve out the bottom side when you have it flipped, flipped over and you have it, you have a form like this. 
Hello. I, I, I have a, I have a question. Uh huh. When we flip the 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 wooden piece itself in the machine, yes. Uh, how is it going to be adapted to the same zero point? Like because it has to be in the same place, right? Yeah, yeah. You use uh, duct tape to mark out. So this is a square, right? Mm. So you will you would have you know you would have this piece here and then uh, you would have some sort of a duct tape mm. glue uh, come on glued here and another piece of duct tape glued here and you kind of with a pencil you just write you know this this point you know or, or something like that you just write on the duct tape basically this is your point and that duct tape will um lock kind of your, your your position of the model in place right so once once you have it uh, milled out let's say the top part of it is milled out then you take it uh you know take it away but it's still here right so that means you can just rotate it by hand and kind of move it back and push it right where the two to two parts of duct tape meet. So it aligns again. And then you run this, uh, uh, like, like uh, the, the, this G code, you know, of the bottom part on it. And it's, it's just going to align. It's never going to be ideal. Keep that in mind. It's always going to be that kind of a 0 0.5, even sometimes one millimeter, you know, misalignment so it's not going to be the um, n never a perfect alignment but it's going to be good enough definitely good enough so that you can just take some sandpaper and kind of hide it in a minute that does, does that answer the question or Lara <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I did the answer. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh huh. Um, so, yeah. So, so, so that would be the next step. You know, to to prepare the second file. Um, exporting G code from the, so the 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 Fusion three hundred and sixty is done through a process that's called post process. Right. So let me close the simulation. Enable the model. So we have this whole setup here, right? So I can choose the setup, my first setup, and I can choose uh, here in the actions, I can choose post process, which is, um, you know, th this is uh, like posting is basically the same thing as exporting G code. And now this is a problem because every single CNC machine has a different, um, uh, ex not extension, but a different configuration, right? If I expand this, this is all different configurations for different machines. And the school's machine uh, also has its own, not, not its own co configuration, it's one of these. It's just that I don't remember. It's written in the wood workshop on the door, uh, right on the door uh, near the CNC mill machine, uh, what kind of uh, configuration you need to use here. And then basically to export the G code, you just, uh, kind of choose the, the correct configuration, you open, um, no, 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 you, you select, you know, you, you select where you're going to be exporting it, you know, to desktop or what, whatnot. And then you just hit post and it's going to export, you know, this kind of G code that the machine reads for you. It's just that I don't remember which one and all of you, you know, mm, Every since every machine needs a, a different one, different type, uh, you need to kind of double check. But once you have, you know, exported it, it's, it's pretty easy to run it. Um, in case of Lund University uh, or, or LTH in, in general, um, you should basically 
have the, 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 the G code files, but also you should have the Fusion 360 files for the operators because you're not allowed to run the G code files on the CNC machine by yourselves. It's the operator who needs to run it. Uh, so the way it's, it works in Lund is you bring in Fusion 360 files and you show them, uh, you know, on the laptop or you just send it over via email to the operator. He double checks the paths and if everything is fine and then he runs the G code for you, right? But of course, with you being present there. So to save the file, if you just hit save, it's going to um, it, it it's going to save the file into the cloud, <laughs> right? And it's it's kind of hard to get it from the cloud, which which I really don't like. Uh, so what you can do is yeah, now I need to remember. I I believe it's file export. Autodesk Fusion 360 files. Yes, uh, so this one. And then you just choose location and CNC top, hit export. So you're basically saving a Fusion file by exporting it uh, in, into your own computer. I don't know. Uh, weird, but you know, works. So why not? So you would be bringing this Fusion 360 file to the operator to, to check. Make sense? Any questions? Everything's clear about this? I will be uploading this, of course, on YouTube, uh, probably right now, just so that uh, you guys have that kind of a, um, the next time when you need to see and see mail, uh, you have the possibility to do so. Uh, there's one thing that I almost forgot to mention, and it's, um, with 3D printing, if you're printing a cantilever, cantilevering structure, you know, something that sticks out, there's support material that is being placed. In Fusion 360, not in Fusion, sorry, in CNC milling in general, let me create a new image, Shift F5, okay. So in CNC milling, if you have uh, a form that is something like this in, in a section, right? So if you have a form like this that you want to mill out, I guess you can kind of assume w which area is problematic for the drill bit that can only go down <laughs> to reach, right? So really, really try to avoid. It's not to say that there are no drill bits that um, have this kind of shape, right? And can kind of do, do a little bit of, of, of this. Well, they, they kind of have this, this, this shape. So, but really try to avoid these kind of internal cave systems, internal overhangs. The, the, the CNC will like, it's still going to generate G code, but it's not going to generate G code for this. So after, if, if you have something like this and you just use a drill bit that looks like that, right? And there's a, there, there's a holder and you know, the whole thing. Uh, so if, if you have something like this, uh, then what it's going to create from, from this kind of shape, once it drills it out, it's just going to be this. It's going to completely ignore this area, right? So keep that in mind, right? A anything that, that has this kind of cantilever that blocks the path for, for the drill bit uh, will be either ignored or even worse, not ignored. And it's just going to kind of cram in you know, it, it, into, into your model and kind of destroy the model. So you need to be mindful of that when you're designing for CNC milling. Does this part make sense? It's 
like John said. Is that okay with you guys? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, so we're done with this tutorial. Um, hope you're going to use it for good. <laughs>